Um, former veteran co coalition players, a, a group and an organization that Kubota has partnered with for several years and given away 41, now 46 pieces of equipment to veterans coming back from serving our country. And uh, they, they've got a, a big challenge ahead, just like they had in the service of helping the rest of us feed the world. And it, it's a very small percentage of our population that's in charge of feeding the rest of this entire world. And, um, this, this equipment will will no doubt help them do that. How rewarding you, is it for you to be a part of this and to be able to, to meet these farmers and, and veterans so to award them this equipment? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's just they, they went and, like I said, the five that, that received keys today all served post 9 11. So, um, you know, in, in a time that we all remember uh, our country being in crisis, they went and, and signed up and, and went and, and served. And, um, you know, now that they're now that they're back and, and they get to do what do what they love. They wouldn't be getting to agriculture unless they really loved it. And uh, they each have a little bit unique, uh, you know, farm at home that they're that they're tending to. And uh, just this equipment is a farmer's biggest asset. I mean, you, just, you can't farm in today's world without equipment. And it's your single, you know, arguably against land, your largest input cost. So um, for us at our farm, speaking from from our experience. Um, new equipment is, is a game changer, and uh, this this will change the game for these people. It was a, a, a personal ask from my dad and I. Um, our first race in the LA Clash at the Coliseum in 2022. Um, Andrew Lukinich and, and our sales team we were all meeting because it was our first time racing together, and, and they were talking about all the different ideas and things they had. They were going to go try to sell. We had a lot of open races when we started last year. Uh, we had really arguably 10 races that came over with me from CGR uh, but that didn't help the boost and we had to go sell the rest and so um, with that we kind of got my dad and I got a little glossy eyed listening to all the other ideas and, and they finally asked what we would like and my dad without me even responding my dad said agriculture something in farming that's what we want and I, I agree and uh, so we've, we've obviously onboarded a lot of great partners but this one's this one's special this one is what y'all see the watermelon you hear me talk about agriculture this is a company that is way bigger than me but we have a unique platform here in NASCAR and to partner together like this this event today wasn't a track house event this was a farmer veteran coalition and Kubota event that we're spotlighting it at the NASCAR race and uh, if we can grow this and get more veterans to sign up it's free for them to sign up um, but it all started with a, a simple ask of my dad and, and, uh, and track houses took it and ran with it. Marcin Hosevar uh, mentioned that he that you've been a, a mentor for him this season. What what exactly have you been uh, teaching him over the season? Well, not where to buy his clothes because he buys them in the big and tall store. <laughs> but um, yeah, just look. There's there's just there's going to be mistakes, and if we can just minimize those mistakes, um, you know, it's just hat track. We're not I'm not helping him with any career advice or or signing contracts or anything. It's just the little things of what MMI can help with. Um, and, and then he's been doing sim for uh, track house for a while now. Um, moving on to, to his own sim now, so we won't be using him um, anymore. But it's, you know, it's the same kind of thing I did. I, I was the, the sim driver for CGR, uh, just like Carson was for track house. So um, then you get the track and just making sure all the little things that were bounced between the garages and and uh, making sure that his family's here and, and they're where they need to be and, and all those little things that as a driver you have to forget about and need to delegate that. Um, the MMI group helped with that and then the driving side, we haven't helped much. He's, it's really just been about helping him slow down and drive it uh, as, his, as uh, Tyler Green says, 99%. Does it help, does it help to uh, see him now racing with you in the Cup Series? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's where we all dream to get to. Um, but he's he's got a heck of a, a opportunity ahead of him at Nice Motorsports in the Truck Series Championship this year uh, in these playoffs. So I'm excited to watch him in that. Ross, you come from the fields of agriculture. How much does that transition with you of taking care of your equipment and knowing what the value is and what you've got to you know take care of throughout your life to be able to grow? How's that transition with you into the racing world? Yeah, it's, uh, I used to get in trouble for driving the tractors too fast, I mean, I'll be honest. So I'd get to the other end of the field where Dad couldn't see me, and I'd bump it up from, from B2 to B3, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a uh, that's a half mile an hour, and then you're not doing the job right. So um, 
I learned that later in life, to be honest. As a kid, I, uh, I tended to get in trouble for driving the tractors too fast. You come from a family of farmers. Um, what has your family said about this partnership and being able to have such an opportunity to give back to so many people like this? Yeah, they, I mean, we love it. We just we want to promote agriculture. And, and we're selfish, and we want to promote watermelons, but we, we also are part of, of feeding the world. And, and whether it's cattle or, or whatever uh, this, this, this group is going to take on, um, farmers across the world, we, we all kind of share this bond that you know that you're going out and working your dirt to the best of your ability. And so these, this equipment, I, I can't overstate it enough that how it's much of a difference when you're working dirt, your equipment is everything. So you can you can just take on so much more. You can you can repair when when. When the weather's bad, you can get your dirt back in shape. You can uh, prevent whenever storms are coming with the right equipment. So um, it's all about the dirt and the best way that, that farmers can, can cultivate their dirt and, and maximize it is through their equipment. Yeah, our family, we, they love it. My granddad loves it. Um, it's just uh, it's just so cool. It's so cool that I get to do and talk about the things that, that, that raised me and, and that... Um, Right, we're, we're all, we're all. Uh, I'm just, just so proud of what my family's been able to accomplish in agriculture because it's not easy, and that's why I know how important it is to get this equipment into these veterans' hands. Do so you feel that? like? Do you feel like you have a lot of farmers that are your fans now? I noticed that. You know, Kansas is farmers, but you're growing a farmers fan base, which is the heart of the country. It's a lot of people. Have you noticed that? I have, Claire. Um, look, my my entry into the sport 2011 trucks 2012 ish area or era uh, was all agriculture based sponsors it was people in ag that knew the chastains that then sponsored ross because he was ralph's son or richie's nephew or or my you know i was the grandson um so now the the fact that we've grown it used to when we saw somebody with a watermelon hat on it was somebody we knew now we don't and that's so cool uh, but I'm getting to meet more and more people, and um, you know, from Moose Lodge appearances on when we fly into these markets and, and these towns, um, it's just yes, I see the fan base growing, and I see the agriculture and the farmer fan base growing, uh, and I hear it from them, um, and so it's it is it's uh, it's we're all just like-minded people that that are doing our jobs, and really a farmer can go all day and not see anybody and not tell their story. So that's what I feel like my platform here is so cool and, and so special is that I get, I have a platform to tell the farmer's story and uh, we keep finding new ways to do that and today with the Farmer Better Coalition has uh, been a great way to do it. So speaking on that 10K incentive as someone in agriculture, how important is that for people like this um, and what can you, I guess, use that for? Yeah, every, every farm is different and every farm has needs. Um, so that's up for the Farmer Veteran Coalition. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get to, and I don't want to, right, guide them on how the money gets spent. It's, it's going to go in and we trust them to do the best they can with it. So it's um, it's really neat that, that uh, you know, this group is is so specialized in what they're doing. It's going to make a real difference. And what about 9-11 and presenting these Komodo tractors to these veterans who come from, you know, farm country, but have done their service, as you think about 9-11. I mean, when he said it, I, I remember where I was when we saw the attacks happen. I was in third grade, so uh, most of the folks getting these tractors were older, and they signed up post 9-11, uh, and they went and served. So, you know, I was a third grader, and I remember that moment vividly, and it changed our country, and it, and it changed changed so many people's lives so for those five brave veterans to go and, and do what they did um, to, to reward them with this now is uh, the least we can do. Do you have any veterans in your family? Do you know about people who served? My, my granddad served in the army and his brother my great uncle TJ served in the navy so um, they were they were raised in South Georgia is where the farm was near Thomasville and O'Clotney. Uh, they moved to South. My great granddad moved the family to South Florida like in the 50s, and it was hot and the farming was not going good. So uh, my great uncle TJ was a little bit older. He went off in the Navy, and with my granddad, uh, my granddad, he was old enough. He signed up with the Army because it was a better life. So um, yes, they both did, and uh, were. We're super proud of it. We don't, they don't, they don't talk about it a whole lot. Um, but yes, uh, they both, they both did it. And, uh, 
it's not going to be a problem. Someone talked about you getting hot at the right time, and it's like there was a little bit of a summer slump. Have you and Phil really been concentrating on the final 10 races so you can repeat or do one, you know, one or two spots better once we get to Phoenix? We haven't changed our processes, honestly. Um, you know, sometimes we come and we qualify 27th, and sometimes we qualify 6th, and it, there's no real rhyme or reason, but it's not from a lack of effort or that we're putting more emphasis on other races. Um, you know, I, I I don't have a real reason why. Uh, I just know that the car had grip in qualifying this week, and, and the car didn't have as much grip for the seat of my pants and my butt to drive it. And ultimately, when I go and hustle the lap, it's going to be about about that, that, that butt driving from the from the seat of my pants feeling. And um, I had the you know the commitment to go both weeks, but it, something told me to lift more at Darlington. That ultimately put us in 27. I thought I lifted a lot in qualifying here, and we were the fastest car in round one. So, um, we just we trust our processes. So we, we we're evolving for sure, and we we there's definitely things we're doing different now than we were doing you know six weeks ago, but uh, not on purpose. Last year you got your first top ten at Bristol. How do you feel about going there next week? Good. Um, yeah, just that part of the country is so beautiful in this time of year. Uh, maybe take the mountain bike up and do a little creeper trail action and uh, just cruise around. And then, uh, yeah, get over there and, and, uh, and rip for 500 laps. I mean, it's super high speed. We did the tire test there uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and it's it's fast. And we were, they sprayed the bottom, so we ripped around the bottom. And we'll see what they do, right? If they spray it, uh, we'll be down there. If they don't re-spray it before the cup race, we'll move up quick. And uh, we'll, go, we'll go fight. And uh, we're, we're gaining on it. We mentioned uh, so people here that have they haven't seen a race since before COVID. They come from all over the West. Can you talk about it, what it means to look up the stage and see people like that? Yeah, it's it's really neat. Um, you know, just uh, we all lived through that time of, of the craziness of COVID, and now uh, now to be you know fully back and just just rolling and so many people um, selling out races. You know, hearing the announcements is, is just a, a great feeling for me. Um, yeah, I don't always want to be the center of the spotlight, but I don't mind it uh, every now and then. Ross, do you and your dad ever have like a personal competition of how many watermelons set aside for the year? How many watermelons? Just set aside for your wins for the oh. year. Uh, well, we so we we only farm a spring crop in Florida, so yep. we're harvesting uh, April through Memorial Day. Um, so right now they're coming from other farms, so we're not uh, we don't save them for the rest of the year. They, they wouldn't be any good. So um, sometimes we pick them up at the grocery store, just like everybody else. I buy my groceries at the grocery store. I'm not living on the farm still, um, so I, I rely on farmers just like everybody else. You mentioned um, you mentioned that you had a struggling run at Darlington, and that you also mentioned that Bristol can bring the wackiness and craziness like we saw last year. So how is imp uh, how important is today that you get yourself a decent run at Kansas because you you practice solid, you qualified solid. How important is today to set yourself up for Bristol? Yeah, it, you, just, you want to scrap up as many points as you can is what I've learned, and just don't leave any on the table. Um, you just never know what will happen. And, I mean, crashes happen in NASCAR so fast. These cars are heavy. They don't stop well. Uh, you can get caught up or be, be the cause of the crash really easy. Uh, I was explaining this to people earlier, just how much we're sliding around here, and you don't even realize it because the track looks so smooth. But I promise you, that one car, that Kubota car, it, she's sliding around a good bit. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll go see what we got today. Thank you.